take five. Williams, check out the woods. Glad to get back from this one. Very well, thanks. Hey, Kirby. Don't plot those boots anywhere. You're not in Paris yet. Uh, another 12 hours, I sure will be. That kind of teases you just to think about it. Seven days and seven nights in Paris. Yeah, somebody ought to warn those girls. Well, you warn them or not, they haven't got a chance. What about you, Sarge? Where are you going on your furlough? Well, I thought it'd be nice to spend it out here. <laughs> but I think I'll give Paris a try. What about you, Vincent? You got any plans for yourself? Yeah. I'm going back to England. Oh, London, huh? Uh, just a few miles outside of London. A place called Boddington. Got yourself a girl back there? I got seven of them. Ah, go on, get out of here. No, I mean, I can prove it. Yeah, I'll show you. Put chairs in place. Yeah. That's very funny. Well, well, they're girls, aren't they? Well, it's a bunch of kids. What are you going to do, go back and babysit with them or something? Yeah, something like that. Yes, sir, I'll take a look. That's yeah, going to be some furlough. Hey, Garvey, you really need a rest. You missed one. She's not a kid, either. I didn't see that. She runs the place. It's kind of a home for kids. You know, the parents are dead, and she kind of looks after them. She's okay. Maybe it sounds kind of dumb, but uh, I don't know. I just like it there. Anyway, I want to go back because uh, something I want to give her. I, I've been saving some. That's Williams. Come on. Kirby, give us cover. Vincent, circle around to the left. I'll try to get him from the right. to her. Would you, would you make sure she gets it?
combat. Starring Vic Morrow. And Rick Jason. star, Carol Lawrence. Hey, kid, is this number nine, Carrington? Yes, sir. Is there an Ann Tinsley in there? Yes. Come on, I'll show you. Tinsley? Yes. Well, uh, can I talk to you? As you can see, I'm engaged in a class at the moment. Well, you see, I have, uh, I have something to give you. Yes. Well, it's, uh, it's personal. Very well. Would you mind waiting in the living room? It's down the hall and to your right. I shall be along in a moment, Sergeant. Okay. Philip, Philip, we are not painting the war. I think we've all seen enough of it as it is, don't you? Yes. afraid of me. Don't be afraid of me. I'm not going to hurt you. Come on. I'm not going to hurt you, am I? What's your name? Leave her alone. There, there, Paulette. It's all right. There's nothing to be frightened of. Come on. Come on now. It's all right. There, there. Now, you see? Mrs. Davis, please take Paulette up to her room. Why, the poor dear, she's trembling. And stay with her, if you will. I'll be up in a few moments. There, there now. I'll give you some milk and biscuits. How would you like that? She's frightened of soldiers. As you can see, I'm terribly busy. I have something for you. It's $300 from Private Harold Vincent. He wanted you to have it. But why? I don't know why. I didn't get a chance to ask him. He was dying.
Here now, you. You just watch your language, eh? I'm a lady. When will your train be leaving, Sergeant? A couple hours. Mm. London. That's the place to spend a furlough. Boddington's all right, you know, but it's so quiet. You waiting for someone? Excuse me, but could I speak to you for just a moment? Sure. There's a table over there. Thank you. Would you like a drink? Oh, no, thank you. I just wanted to explain. Well, I, I do owe you an apology for the way I behaved. I'm truly sorry about Harold. It was very thoughtful of him. When did he... It was a couple of days ago. He was planning to spend his furlough here. Oh. You see, he used to visit us on weekends when he was stationed near here. He was an orphan himself, you know. He had a marvelous way with children. Especially with Paulette. One day, Harold came and took ten of the children for an outing. Only eight returned. It seems two of them wandered off into some rubble. There was an unexploded bomb. Paulette's sister was killed. And when she saw Harold carrying her sister out of the dust, she began to scream. She was still screaming when they returned. And she's never spoken since. So you can understand why she was so frightened of your uniform. Oh, we'd better go to the shelter. It's just on the street. on Carpenter's Road, I expect. You better get down to shelter. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to be such a trouble, Sergeant, but I've told Anne I refuse any longer to let the war interfere with my daily routine. Look, Mr. Tinsley, if you want to stay up here and get your head blown off, that's your business. I only came up here because Anne was worried about you. only that I'm tired of running every time I hear an engine sputter. No, it's my, uh, it's from my asthma. It's dreadfully damp in that shelter.
Here we go gathering nuts in May on a cold and frosty morning. Who should we have for nuts? <laughs>
pretty stupid of me, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I, uh... Guess I need a rearranging anyway, huh? The rest of the house isn't like this. Still, with a little toil, pushing things about, we'll, we'll soon have the place in order again. Are you all right, Anne? Oh, yes. Well, perhaps we'd better start getting a room ready for the sergeant here. Oh, well, thank you, but I'm going to try to catch that last train if I can. Oh, nonsense. You're much too late. You missed it. You won't find any decent rooms in Boddington, I can assure you. Now, you're staying the night with us. We have a spare room at the back. Father's right. You won't find better accommodations at any of the hotels. Okay, thank you. Glad to have you with us, Sergeant. What was your name? Saunders. Saunders. <laughs> well, come with me, Saunders. I'll show you where the whiskey is. Or was. stay with us if he really wanted to? No. Now go to sleep. Why? Because soldiers have to go where they're sent. Was he sent here? No. But you said that... I said go to sleep. Right now. He's still in sleep. Cynthia, you should be asleep. You want to know a secret? Mm -hmm. I like Sergeant Saunders, don't you? Yes. Now, will you go to sleep? Keep looking every day now. Be pretty soon. Hi. Looks like everybody's up bright and early, huh? Miss Tinsley said for us not to wake you. Are you going to leave now? Yeah, pretty soon. Oh, what do you got there? Oh, that's the magic coin. Well, I wanted you to have it. It's for you here. First time I've seen her smile in months. Now, you have lots of work to do, young man. Off you go. 
I'm sorry if they disturbed you. Oh, how soon will you be going? I'm going to catch the next train. Oh, that would be about 10.15. I guess you will have to hurry. Still, it is a shame you have to go without breakfast. Well, I'd miss the train, wouldn't I? I'm afraid so. Oh, you will say goodbye to the children? I know they'd like that. Yeah, sure. Try and move this. One, two, three. Did it. Wait a minute, let me give you a hand with that. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, that was a heavy one. I think I'll take five, as you Yanks say. some help around here. I suppose we could at that. But what about your train? I'll just catch the next one. All right. Oh, Savage, what about your eggs? Huh? Your eggs. How would you like them fixed? Oh, uh, on a plate. sleep as quickly as possible because we're going to get up very early tomorrow morning and go on a picnic. Yay! Well, haven't you forgotten something?
short prayers tonight, Andrew? Carrots would have been up. Now everything is dead. Going after Berman. Today they were here. Tomorrow, who knows? God, it seems as if it's always been like this. It'll end. I'm afraid you must be exhausted. Oh, get me back in shape. I feel fine. They certainly think so. What do you think? I think... I think you ought to have some time to yourself. Picnics are supposed to be relaxing you. Okay, then how about a walk? All right. Oh, well... Uh... Father, watch the children for a minute, will you?
Time we left, I think, don't you? I'll gather up the children. Oh, Sergeant. I, uh... I don't quite... I don't quite know how to say this, but, uh... Anne, the, the way she manages the children through all this, you'd, you'd think she was a strong person, but... Well, she is, but she's also very sensitive. The war has hurt her. I don't know whether she's told you or not, but uh, what I'm trying to say is I don't want her hurt again. Well, neither do I. I see. Thank you, Sergeant. It was about me, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about you. What did he say? Oh, nothing. Just that you're kind of special. Children have such a wonderful time. <coughs> oh, I must have dozed off. Mm. Where are the children? We just put them to bed. And that's mm. where you ought to be. <laughs> Sign of old age when you can't stay awake beyond the children's bedtime. <laughs> Good night, Bunny. Good night, Father. Good night, son. Good night. <sighs> Somehow tonight, the war seems a million miles away. How much more time do you have? Three days. And I'm leaving in the morning. Why? Is it because of something Father said? What did he tell you about me? He doesn't want to see you hurt. I see. And you think that You'll hurt me if you stay. Dear father, he's always protecting me. You see, I was married to a soldier. It, it all happened very quickly. We met, we fell in love. We had only a short time together. He was killed soon after D-Day. The bottom simply dropped out of my life. Everything seemed so meaningless. I even resented other soldiers merely because they were alive. I guess I blamed the world for not giving David and me more time. Now I knew that was wrong. You can't withdraw from life. It, 
isn't how much time you have. It's how you spend it. Please. Let's have our three days. And it could happen again. I have to go back. Three days. Could be all the time we'll ever have. Are you sure that's what you want? I'm sure. It's Mr. Tinsley. He's having an attack. Taking your medicine. I didn't have any more medicine. Where can I get some? Oh, there's a chemist about a half mile down the road, number 207. 207. Yes. Mr. Tinsley. 